Hello and welcome back to yet another Mac Deck Tech. Today we have a custom commander build for you known as Nico's Flickering Light, helmed by none other than Nico Light of Hope from Dustborn. Nico is a 4 cost 3 4. When they enter the battlefield, you get to create a couple of shard tokens, which are nice little enchantment tokens, which you could crack to scry. But Nico also lets you pay to and tap him to exile a non legendary creature that you control and have all of those shards become copies of that creature. So what is our game plan here? Well, we're looking to flicker Nico a lot, right? We want to have as many shards as possible, and flickering Nico is the way we're going to get there. Once we have a ton of shards, we obviously need some sort of payoff in terms of a good creature or creatures that we could like sort of turn these shards into. So we're looking for those as well as just abusing general ETB effects because we are running in a flicker deck. So, let's get started. Abdel Adrian Gorian's Ward is up first for our flicker boys. They are a little expensive in terms of flickering effects, costing 5 mana, one of which has to be white, but they are a 4-4. When they enter the battlefield, or enter, as we've uh, recently changed to, you get to exile any number of other non-land permanents, uh, basically under Gorian, just until he leaves, and for each one you're going to create a 1-1 one, one soldier token. So by being able to flicker Abdel, we really get to abuse the fact that, you know, oh, we're exiling our whole field basically, and then our whole field comes back, and then our whole field leaves, and our whole field comes back. Uh, so these kind of effects that let you exile more than one target at a time are phenomenal, and we're here for it. Abuelo Ancestral Echo. So this is a 3 cost 2-2 two, two, Flying Ward 2, so not bad stats. For 3 mana, we do get to exile a thing, flickering it effectively. And it'll come back at our end step. But, one, that's a good way to, like, save our commander should they be, you know, targeted with removal. As well as the fact that, you know, when they come back, we're going to get more shards. So we're here for it. Brago, King Eternal. So Brago is a 2-4 for 4. They do fly. We love that evasion because whenever they deal combat damage to a player, we get to exile on a number of target non-land permanents and return them immediately to the battlefield. So again, we're flickering our whole field. We're abusing ETBs. We're here for it. Of course, wouldn't be a flicker deck without the Deadeye Navigator, a 5-5 five five Soul Bonder for 6 mana. Uh, once it's paired, you could pay one in the blue to flicker one of them, and it's pretty good, right? Uh, whenever a new creature enters, if they're not already paired, we could pair them up again. Whenever they come back in, obviously we could pair them. So, super versatile, very repeatable. Of course, there's also the Displacer Kitten. So a 2-2 two, two for four mana. Those stats don't sound great, but it's okay. We're here for that effect. Which is, whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we basically get to flicker a thing. Uh, the flicker is immediate, it's not one of those end step flickers, so, you know, we have a lot of flicker spells already in the deck that are non-creature, and this basically lets us double up on those effects. Felidar Guardian, you know them, you love them, they're broken, um, because they don't uh, have that restriction of non-land, which is a little relevant, generally it doesn't make a huge difference, but there there is like one land slash creature in the deck, and we'll get to them, you know, towards the end. But, uh, you know, infinite ETB triggers off of that, so take note. Flicker Wisp is going to follow up that Felidar Guardian. Uh, when they enter, we do get to do a, uh, a slow flicker, right? They're going to come back at the end step. Uh, I kind of wish they were flashable in that regard. They are a 3-1 for 3 mana. Uh, so Tiny Booty, very easily removed, but the ETB trigger is going to go off regardless, so that's okay. Felia Exuberant Shepherd. So Philia is actually an interesting case, right? They feel like one of the few creatures in our deck that are kind of both offensive and defensive in terms of how their flicker is applied. Uh, so there are two two that we can flash in for two mana. Whenever they attack, we get to exile a non-land permanent. At the beginning of the next end step, it comes back, so it is a nice slow flicker. And if it happens to come back under our control, which for the most part is what we're looking for, uh, they're gonna get a little bigger, right? A little plus one plus one counter. Restoration Angel follows up that Shepherd. So a flying, flashable 3-4 four for 4. 
When they enter, you get to flicker a non-angel. Of course, repeatability is what we're here for, so we have the Soul Herder, right? A 1-1 one, one for 3, so stats aren't great, but at the end step, we do get to flicker a thing, and every time we do so, not even just from its own effect, but just, like, in general, uh, whenever something is exiled from our battlefield, they're getting a little bigger, so... They're going to get very large, very quick in this stack. Moving out of our creature support and down into some spell slinging, we have another round. Uh, so this is double X, two and a white, but we do get to exile any number of creatures we control, return them to the battlefield immediately, and we're going to repeat that process X times. So, you know, at five mana, we're doing it twice. At seven mana, you know, we're doing it three times. And, like, we're going to get a lot of value out of that. We're also running Splash Portal. Uh, this is new. It's from uh, Bloomboro. So, not my ideal one, right? Uh, it's definitely decent tech. I don't think we have a lot of uh, bird frogs, otters, or rats in this deck to really trigger the effect to get that extra draw. But it is a nice single, you know, blue mana to flicker a creature. So I think it's still pretty worthwhile. Moving down into some faster ways of doing things. That's right, we're talking instant speed. We have Cloud Shift, Cosmic Intervention, Eerie Interlude. Eerie Interlude actually being worth like, talking about for a moment because they don't come back until the end step. So you really want to save your Eerie Interlude in your hand for like a board wipe situation. Be like, haha, my whole board is gone. Go ahead, wipe that board. I don't care. Ephemerate, which is also nice because it has Rebound, Essence Flux, Flicker of Fate, Getaway Glamour. So this is actually a Thunder Junction card. It's a Spree card. So for two mana, we could flicker a thing. It is a slow flicker, so they're going to come back at end step. Uh, but we could also have the option of paying that extra two mana to just go ahead and destroy a target creature if no other creature has greater power. Uh, are we always going to have you know, want to use that second effect. No, we're really here for the first effect, but the fact that the second effect is there is icing on that cake. Following that up, we have Ghostly Flicker and Momentary Blink. But wait, there's more. We're running that Conjurer's Closet. So Conjurer's Closet is a five cost artifact and it just lets you flicker something at your end step. And it's pretty good, I'll take it. Far Traveler is going to follow that up. So this is actually a background. We like backgrounds. So, you know, I kind of wish that, like, more things let us have backgrounds. I get why they don't. I feel like the background mechanic could be a little abused. Um, but at our end step, we get to basically flicker a tapped creature, have them come back. And, you know, that includes our commander, right? We tap our commander down to turn our shards into creatures. End step. Flicker the commander because he's tapped. He comes back in, creates more shards. That's what we're here for. And last of our flickery effects is the teleportation circle. So effectively a conjurer's closet in white for one less mana. Uh, but it's all good, right? That's what we're here for. All right. So we've gone over the fact that we're flickering ideally our commander quite a bit. But, you know, what else are we doing with this? Well, those shards he creates, as I mentioned earlier, are enchantments. So, how about some enchantment ETB bonuses, right? Starting off, we have the Archon of Sun's Grace. So every time an enchantment enters the battlefield, we're going to go ahead and create a 2-2 Flying Pegasus. And those Pegasus have lifelink. So Archon of Sun's Grace, followed up by Nico, is going to generate us two 2-2 two -two Flying Lifelinkers. Just as like a little little treat, little bonus on top. Entity Tracker. So this is a new card from Dustmorn. Three mana to three whenever an enchantment you control enters the battlefield or we fully unlock a room. Definitely not really doing that second one a whole lot. Um, we get to draw a card, right? We're going to keep our hand nice and full. You know, we want to be able to play as many cards as possible. Most of our cards are pretty low to the ground in terms of cost and really abuse these ETB effects. Fear of Sleep Paralysis. So this is an enchantment creature, so it's already like going to pay for itself whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield, or we can, you know, fully unlock a room. We get to tap down an opponent's creature with a stun counter, and those stun counters do not get removed uh, from permanence our opponent's control. So they are permanently stuck down as long as we have this Sleep Paralysis Demon. 
Ghostly Dancers. So Ghostly Dancers is a 5 cost to 5 flying spirit. Stats are okay, right? Kind of wish they were a little more powerful in terms of how hard they're hidden, but that's alright. When they enter, we get to return an enchantment from our grave to hand, or unlock a room. Either effect is fine. Again, we're not playing a ton of rooms in here, but, you know, we do have, I think, just like the one, so, like, could be relevant. Uh, but more importantly, whenever an enchantment we control enters the room, or not enters the room, <laughs> enters the field, uh, we do get to create a 3-1 flying spirit. So again, right, generating these flyers, it's like, you know, how many flyers do your opponents have? How many reach creatures do they have? I'm betting not a ton, and with us flickering our commander, generating two every time, you know, our field's going to be quite large and in charge. Gremlin Tamer, right? So our tokens aren't done yet. The Gremlin Tamer has Eerie as well. And while these tokens don't fly, you know, we're still going to take the 1-1s one that we're going to generate from it. And going wide, having a bunch of chump blockers, all of it works in our favor. So those are all of the enchantment payoffs, but we're not done quite yet. You know, we do have some other honorable things that I feel like are worth talking about. We're not going to go over every single ETB in the deck, but we are going to go over, you know, a number of them. Starting off, we have Claim Jumper. So Claim Jumper is great. Uh, there are 3-3 three, three with Vigilance for 3 mana. Already decent stats. When they enter, we're going to look for 8 planes, assuming that we control fewer lands than an opponent. And we're going to slap onto the battlefield tapped. First and foremost, that planes doesn't have to be basic, so we love that. And if we still control fewer lands than an, than an opponent, we get to do it again. So... You know, we are running 36, I think 37 if you include the modal uh, flip land. But, you know, if we're falling behind on lands, we're in a bit of a drought. Claim Jumper is going to kind of help us maintain pace with all the other decks. Glass Pole Mimic. So Glass Pole Mimic lets us go ahead and basically just be a clone body. Uh, cloning, you know, a number of our powerful ETP effects in this deck is just strong. So we're kind of here for it. Uh, I actually run this loop in my Infinite Dungeon deck. I decided to splash it in here because I do think that the dungeons in general are good, which means we're running the Radiant Solar. So Radiant Solar is a 3-6 six for 6. We could pay a single white to discard them to venture into a dungeon and gain 3 life. But more importantly, whenever another non-token creature enters, we're going to venture the dungeon. So... With the Radiant Solar, a clone spell, or just like two things that flicker at instant speed when they enter the battlefield, we're going to go ahead and really just, you know, win the game on the spot, running through a dungeon infinitely. Uh, the other one being Spark Double, right? So we do have two clone spells natively. Uh, this doesn't really work in my understanding of the rules with the shards because, like, it is a token, so once it flickers out, it will just be gone. It'll cease to exist due to state-based rules. Uh, the only other one that I wanted to talk about is the Lionheart Glimmer. So, Lionheart Glimmer is honestly a prime target for these shards to turn into. So, it's a 2-5 with Ward 2 for 5 mana. Whenever we attack, all of our creatures get plus 1, plus 1 for the turn. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. Non-legendary, you say? Hmm. Well, it just so happens uh, that I'm going to go ahead and create six plus copies of it. Uh, so yeah, now all of my creatures get plus six, plus six when I attack. Excellent. With so many powerful ETB effects, we do want to double up on them. So we are running things like Panharmonicon. Fractured Realm, uh, Slash Mirror Room, which is the only room that we're playing. Virtue of Knowledge. And we're actually going to double back uh, for one thing real quick, which is the Sphere of Safety that we're also running. Uh, so, 5 cost, a little expensive. Uh, but creatures can't attack us unless they're, you know, the player doing so pays X for each creature, where X is the number of enchantments we control. 
Uh, and in this deck, with us creating so many shards, and a lot of our creatures are also enchantment creatures and whatnot, you know, I feel like the cost to attack us is going to be pretty high at all times, really making us pretty free to swing out and not have to worry about clapback. But guys, there's obviously more cards in this deck. Every card in this deck is under $10. Uh, so the deck's pretty fairly budget, actually. Uh, but there's a link in the description, as always. But I'm Mechanized Minion, a.k.a. The Energy King, wishing you good luck with all of your builds. And if you felt like you got some value out of this deck, tech, you know, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe if you want to hang out with us off of, you know, YouTube. We do have a Discord set up. We're not super active in there in terms of, like, constant conversations. It's pretty small right now. Uh, but, you know, you could definitely help us shape the Discord's path moving forward. But until next time, have a good one.